Hey everyone, this is Ryan. In this video, we will create a confirmation dialog where if the user selects a certain button, it will pop up a backdrop that limits the user from pressing any other icons or buttons on the screen and forces them to you know, read the label here and click proceed if they want to make this change or they can click cancel if they want to back out. Okay, so let's take a look at the current setup I have. Um, on the top right, you'll see I have this in deactivate button here. So if I press it, it'll go straight through and deactivate the record and set the status to inactive. And then I have an activate button at the top right that will activate the contact record. So what I wanna do is when the user clicks the deactivate button, have a pop-up, confirm that the user is going to deactivate the contact. If they click uh, proceed, It'll deactivate the contact, or they can click cancel, where it'll just go back to the screen and no action will be performed on the record itself. So to do this, what we will do is we will add a rectangle and we'll do a backdrop that will cover the whole screen. So that way when the pop-up comes up, the user won't be able to select any other buttons on the screen. So here, we'll go across the whole screen and for the fill, what I recommend is a, um, a nice gray that's uh, semi-transparent here. So what I like to use is uh, 128, 128, 128, and about 20% roughly. So it's a little bit noticeable to the user that, you know, a dialog has appeared and all the other buttons are inactive on the screen. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a backdrop for the confirmation pop-up for the user. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop a new rectangle here, center it for the color. So the fill, I'm going to have it as white. And what I'm going to do is have a gray border in about two Solid, solid line should be good enough for this. And then for here, what I'm going to do is add a label. And what you should do is try to add some context to this. So for example, um, what we can do here is say concatenate, we'll use that function. And what we'll say is, um, you know, are you sure you want to deactivate and what we will say here is we can reference the actual contact that's being deactivated so that they know what context is um, you know, in scope here for deactivation. And what we'll do is reference the gallery on the left and we'll bring in the full name. And then from here, what we can do is we can just um, do a couple line breaks here so that's character 10, we'll use the char function, and we'll do it again. And we'll say, do you want to proceed? And then from here, you'll see we have the pop-up um, confirmation message here. And we'll add a question mark. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll add a button, and we'll add two of them actually. So one, is going to be proceed and is going to be where I like to do 100 by you know, 40 and the initial font's a little bit too big so I'm going to go from a 15 to a 13 here and then I'm going to copy this and since this is a secondary button so it's like a it's a you know this is the preferred option the cancel is most likely going to be selected probably like five percent of the time we can use a different color for this actually. So instead we can use like a white fill and a gray text there. And you can always change around like the hover and pressed and everything like that. But here what we will do is change the um, text here to cancel. So we have proceed and cancel. Now what we could do here is for these five items that we've created, we can group them together. So you'll see group. 
And what we'll say is we're, this is the confirmation dialog. Now you'll see that it's all currently visible to the user. So if I press proceed or cancel, nothing happens. So what we want to do is click on our trigger you know, point of you know, what will trigger this pop-up. And currently in this logic, I, in, on the on select for the deactivate button, you'll see I am patching Dataverse saying deactivate this contact. Instead, I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna add a new variable. And we're gonna say delay uh, display confirmation. And we're going to set that to true and close it. So what we can do here is with our group, we can say visible property, and this will change all the components within the group. So this is the backdrop, the uh, dialogue, rectangle, the label, and the buttons. And we can change that to display confirmation. And you'll see how it's currently not visible. So what we can do now is if we press play and click on it, you see it now appears. So all we have to do is configure our buttons for proceed and cancel. So if I click on the proceed, what I'll do is I'll copy that, um, that patch statement that I had before. And all we have to do now is update the context and actually hide the confirmation pop-up. So display confirmation will be set to false. And then what we can do here is copy this and we can put it just the, the display confirmation set to false. We can paste that to the on select of our cancel option. So if I press play and I click cancel, press the deactivate again, proceed. You'll see when I click proceed, it's now inactive. I can activate and then I can always click delete again. And you can see the user cannot select off anywhere on the screen. So this is how you can add a you know, confirmation dialogue or pop-up to your app, restrict the user from selecting anywhere else on the screen, having an option to proceed with performing that action or back out. So you give the user a second chance to um, you know, back out of that change that could have implications to the data or or system.